Hello guys, I'm Shikar and today I'm going to tell you about a software called Proteus and it's a software mainly used for electronic automation, electronic circuit automation which is used by um, hobbyist, electronics engineer, electrical engineer so they are use this software to make circuits and automate it for prototype building and etc so it's up to you it's mainly used by the electronics engineer and hobbyist so for the start I'm going to tell you where to get that software and uh, how to install it so for that first you have to open your favorite browser I'm going to use Microsoft Edge you can use Firefox or anything you want so let's make a quick Google search for Proteus suit and uh, the first one which is hosted by the labcenter.com this is the site which is hosting the Proteus design suit we're going to the site and I will then navigate to download section always remember that there are so many things you can always wander around the site I'm just quickly going to download this click on download now there are so many things right here this is the PCB design one, VSM simulation. I'm going to tell you about all of these. But first, let's download the original software from this site. And it's right here. Download the demonstration version. They offer the demonstration version for free, but uh, you have to pay for the full version. For the demonstration purpose, I'm going to use the demonstration version. I'll click on it. You have to enter your name, your company name, your email ID, and you can skip this part. And when you will click on the download button, it will download it. I have on, already downloaded it right here. So let's open it up. It will prepare to install. Now, as you might have noticed, I have already installed this uh, version of the software, the Proteus 8 demonstration version. And uh, I'm going to cancel it because it's of no use so as soon as you've installed the software you have to double click on it and it will open it like this Proteus 8 CAD connected and this is the first thing which you will see in this software so yes this is the first thing you'll see when you'll open the software it says Proteus Design Suit 8 now remember that it may vary on the on the point of time which you have downloaded for my time when I'm recording this video it's 8.10 so um, from from the pre previous version of the Proteus software it has been evolved quite much so the home page is a new application module in Proteus 8 which makes it easy to get started with the project and also perform some system, system tasks the start panel on the screen control project opening and creation while the new panels includes general information integrated update manager and crash dump reporting now always remember that you can always skip this part because if you're a hobbyist then you can just go ahead and start your project you open your project or anything if you have a previous project you can always import it and i'm going to tell you how first i'll tell you about the opening and creation of uh, projects so in this one, uh, the relationship between schematic design and PCB layout involves a shared database and is far more integrated. Therefore, have a single project file rather than separate design and layout files. You can create a new project or import a legacy schematic layout via the options on the home page. So, I guess you might have guessed that because in the newer version of Proteus Design Suit, there is no need for separate files so the only file which you have to import from a previous version should be the should be the project file and now i'm going to tell you about the about the main view so there are few tabs right here let's start we, you can see there that's the open project button new project new flowchart open samples and then there's news you can have you know you can see news on this section which is i don't know if it's useful there is some getting started help you can always click on them to know about the functions of it i'm eventually going to tell you about it so 
let's get ahead these are the help section these are the about section as you can see it's the demonstration version which i'm using so now you might have seen that there's some icons on top left side of the application and there's this bookmark type of thing this is called tabs there will be different kind of tabs here first off you'll start with home page then you can have different tabs like let me open any random one so this will open a new tab see so this is the tab version you can click on it to go back to the home page and you can click on pcb layout which i've opened randomly you can go to here and as you can see there's there's another pcb layout tab and then i'm going to open another one just randomly randomly okay what is this let's see okay it's a bill of materials nice that's a nice feature to have i'm going to open another random one so you see there are different tabs and different different functionalities of each tab they are not identical so yeah there's a this is the another function of this um i'm going to close the window so as you can see proteus design suit 8.10 is made up of different different softwares i'm going to tell you one by one this is the home page which you'll start with and then there's schematic capture there's pcb layout this there is 3d visualizer there is gerber viewer there's a design explorer bill of materials source code and project notes so this this software is a complete suit of different tiny little softwares which you might encounter and you'll you'll use now let's go ahead and open a project real quick so i'm going with a new project because i don't have any previous one so new project all right what you can see here is a wizard it will guide you through new project or uh, creating new projects so it may vary with the steps you will take i'm going to first rename my project with something more intuitive as you can see your project has an extension file unique to this it's pds prj which is the default extension file for the project okay i'm going to use anything like i'm going to use my name and there's uh, you can uh, define the path where you can save your project file i'll leave it to default and i'm going to click, click uh, use new uh, project tab because i don't have a def development board as of now but you can click on development board and you can select your microcontroller family from this this drop down menu pic 18 avr pic 24 pic 16 and just like that arduino 322 a 328 sorry arduino mega nano and so on there's so many things this is for the development board and if you just want to make your new project on the computer without using a development board you can you have to click on new project and then click next then there's this step of wizard which is called schematic design it wants you to select the size of the schematic palette where you will design your project so there's landscape a landscape a0 a1 size a2 size just like the sheets of paper a4 size and then there's portrait a1 portrait a4 and portrait usa so there's different kind of uh, you know uh, sizes i'm going to leave it to default and I'm then click on next and then there's for pcb layout if you want the pcb of the schematic which you will draw you have to select on any of these for which you want the pcb i am default with do not create a pcb layout but if you want you can click on create a pcb layout and then choose as you want i'll leave it to default for the information purpose only i'm going to leave it to create a pcb layout then click on next next and then there's pcb layer stack up okay so you you have to just leave it to default values then next and this is pcb drill pairs which you have to leave to default if you're a beginner if you're an advanced user then then you will do accordingly i'm i'm going to click on next and then there's pcb board viewer which will show you the correct information of the pcb which you are using and then click on next and then there's this step which is called wizard firmware um, so um if you are creating an embedded design and want to simulate your firmware 
check the check the check the create firmware box at the top of the screen and then select your controller and compiler using the combo boxes um, just like this and uh, creating firmware project requires a schematic in order to simulate so you cannot proceed from this screen if you opted not to create a schematic earlier in this wizard so as i mentioned it you cannot uh, go ahead if you have not selected a schematic wizard okay as i have selected it i'm going to click on next as you can see it will give you a summary on the final step which includes schematic layout and firmware and the saving path and the details of your project which you are making through this wizard and then click on finish and it will create your project with the tabs now as you can see there are different different windows there's vsm out studio output palette on the down and on your left there's project uh, tree and then to your right in the middle there's the source code ide now this is an integrated ide in the proteus which you can use for your codes as this is an integrated id it saves a tons of space and work power you can code here you can uh, debug it and then you can upload it very quickly to your schematic capture now i'm going to switch it to pcb layout this is the tab section which i told you now as you have, might have noticed there are some small icons on top of it which are new i'll tell you about it later uh, okay click on pcb layout it's nothing there because we haven't created anything in the schematic there's just this one pic 16 f84a now we had selected for the firmware so this is why this device is right here okay so switching back to source code now as i told you about these three tabs i'm going to tell you more so there in proteus 8 application module encompasses functionality that opens as a top level tab inside the proteus application which includes proteus home page which we have seen in the at the first isis schematic capture which has been changed to just schematic capture on your earlier version of proteus if you have it it will be isis schematic capture now then it encompasses of aries pcb layout which is just pcb layout on uh, proteus 8.10 then 3d pcb viewer which you are not seeing currently on the tab section and then you'll see bills of materials which is a handy tool to know the materials you are using and the costing it will take to you know uh, manage your budget and then there's project notes if you're making a project with team and you want to you really share your ideas and something else you can have project notes here which is right here uh, this this icon right here and then there's a design explorer there's another thing like a gerber viewer which is essential for your pcb layout file viewing if you have a pcb layout file then you want to view it on proteus you can use this function and then this is vsm studio ide which we are currently on which says as source code now you might ask me that sugar what actually is a tab so a tab is a small placeholder at the top of a frame when clicked it will bring an application module to the foreground you can also drag and drop tabs onto other monitors if you have dual monitor setup or triple monitor setup to open them in a separate frame so you can just uh, uh, pick the tab drag it to your different monitor all the way to your right or your left wherever you have put there another monitor and you can view this tab as a whole new frame on your different monitor so as i was telling you about these icons these are menus and icons in proteus application framework it contains a small set of menus and icons which are present regardless of which modules or which uh, or which you are working on typically these are used to open other application modules and to handle filling and configuration options and there's like um few io toolbars this is a standard toolbar for creating a new project opening and saving project and closing the current project which is which is here these four tabs these are separated from others by this small line which you can see if you just look closely these are the io toolbars and then there's this other thing called application module toolbar which is uh, this this one and what it does is 
each icon on this toolbar represents an application module clicking on uh, clicking on an icon will open an application module in the current frame remember in the current frame as a different tab it will open the application the uh, regarded application like pcb layout which is opened here the icon represents uh, corresponds to the same and there's this uh, another one and there's so many which i have told you earlier in this video and then there's uh, application toolbars and menus when you open an application module like in the schematic capture both the menus and the toolbars will change to include the various options available if you're using schematic capture it will show you the different regarded uh, menus and options just like microsoft word you see different things in microsoft excel you see different things just like that if you'll open the schematic capture you will see different options different modules if you have two modules open like um, schematic capture and uh, pcb layout in different tabs then the menus and icons will switch as you switch tabs now that's a handy feature the system commands and the application module toolbar are available regardless of which application module you are currently working in and just like that you can always uh, drag drop your uh, tabs from here and there you can you know um, take them out and uh, make a new, new frame and these are very handy things now for a start i'm going to show you how to make a simple circuit and uh, simulate it for this video i'll just show you how to simulate it i'm not going to touch pcb layout not migration guide not anything else i'm just going to tell you about the simulation so i am going to again make a new project for simulation purpose and this will be a new project and i'll make a name and, and change it to necessary name simulation simulation.pdsprj next and i need a schematic design because there will be putting and dragging our stuff and i don't need to create pcb layout i don't want firmware project just want the schematic and finish so as you can see you just started with a schematic tab right here now, as you can see this thing has a grid frame which means you will be having equal unit distribution which is very easy for designing and you know making your circuit look neat and pcb modulation all uh, now you can you will ask me sugar what are these so these are different menus which i was talking about for schematic capture only these also changed for the schematic capture and these two you can have so many tools right here now i'm currently on selection mode tool which means I can select each and every element on the screen which I'll currently have. Unfortunately, I don't have anything. And then there's this overview screen right here. From here, you can um, guide yourself throughout the throughout the palette on which you are working. You can see that there's a green uh, rectangle here. Click on it, and then you can move move the rectangle. You can maneuver it and overview your circuit. So I'm just going to center it to look neat okay now you will see that there's two options here p l and which says devices selector so these are your devices selector i won't recommend you to click on l because this, this is not for you as of now this will open a device library tab which looks very confusion and i would not recommend you to do so what i want you to do is click on p it will open a new frame for you and uh, I'm, I'm gonna start from the left side there's keywords you can type whatever component you need so that you won't have to search from category section uh, so for an example i'm going to search for an led and it will give me all sorts of led i guess yes so it gave me a quite a lot of leds and like led displays and such so let's be precise so this tells us to be precise in what we are searching for i'm going to search for light emitting diode okay now this looks promising because we wanted this we have always pronounced it as led and the software is designed to use the acronym for the words so we typed light emitting diode and it gave us 
the diode now there's two of them they are generic light emitting diode generic stands for the standard one it doesn't have a company name or such now as soon as you'll click on it you'll see a preview on your right and then there's a pcb preview on your bottom right as we have selected no pcb layout and the led does not have actually a pcb layout because it's a passive element so it's just wise to say that it doesn't have a pcb preview so to add this to your schematic preview you just have to double click on it and as you can see you just might have peaked there's this diode led has been added now let's try something different not from this but from the category okay let's see what do we want what do we want we want some switches we want some switches devices which switch do we want there's so many things and let's search for a generic one let's search for a generic one there's so many this thyristor too damn okay so no that's that's 600 volts god damn it So there's device, library, description. These are three things which dignifies which and what we are picking up. And then, and then we are stuck because we cannot find the hardware we need. So what are we going to do? Now that seems a problem because it has a huge amount of library stuff. So what we're going to use is another thing, another thing, another thing which is built in to help us called subcategory. And we're going for a generic option now that looks promising so these are four options we are left with which are generic and generic thyristor triac diac and silicon control rectifier so you see these are the things which we are not going to use so what i did right now i just searched for the switch and here it is switch which is uh, from the library active and the description is interactive SPST switch, which is latched to action. That means for by default, it is open. And as soon as you'll click on it, it will close the circuit, which means it will complete the circuit. So I'll click, I'll double click on it and it will be added to our left. Then to close the menu, either click OK or cancel. So I'm sorry, I didn't want it that. So there is this diode LED to include it. In our schematic palette you just have to click on it and it will show you the preview and then you might you will notice that on the palette your cursor turns to a pen and as soon as you uh, left click it will show you that there's the LED the preview of the LED hovering around on your screen uh, with the cursor's movement and you can place it anywhere with your cursor so I'm just going to place it on uh, right here and as soon as I'll, I'll uh, left click it will be placed remember that using the scroll wheel we can zoom in and zoom out and wherever the our cursor will be the zooming function will point at our cursor's location for equal zooming so if I'll uh, you know um, move my wheel for zoom in it will zoom in where my cursor is and zoom out where my cursor is so if, if we want to again insert the diode notice uh, our cursor is still the pen icon and we'll click, uh, click left and then there will be another diode right here and again click left and it will be placed now to include the switch we have to click on switch and then the pen icon will appear then click on it then there's this switch in between of them okay switch right here and that's it now what are we going to do in order to light those diodes the leds we have to have a dc source for that i have not included it yet i'm going to include it from my parts and i'll search for what i'll search for dc source and it gives us a battery a c source and a v source dc voltage source yes we are going to use dc voltage source because battery has fixed amount of voltage for v source we can vary it according to us and double click it and then press ok and there's our v source i'll click on pen and it will give me my v source and then 
I'll just click on left click again. So, which is not what I wanted it to be to be frank so what I'm going to do I'm going to rotate it again to 90 degree and it's back and I'm going to rotate it again to 90 degree it's where I want it to be now notice why this why this happened because it already shows us the direction in which it will rotate so I must have typed 270 degree to begin with to have it on the my right side now you can see that this dignifies V1 which stands for one voltage but what do we want there are two LEDs for simplicity I'm going to delete this LED from this side yes and I'm going to click on the selection tool to move my LED what the hell So now as we are going to simulate it first off we have to start with new project if you have your previous one you can click on open project okay I'm gonna go through this uh, real quick there's a option for open samples so sample signifies that there's tons of already built-in codes and simulate 
and schematics there's just built in you know uh, projects very little little projects for you to understand and uh, they're already made yeah, like you can take readings from it you can do the circuit analysis you can just uh, look at them working in your proteus software so that's really fun to watch them working there's so many things right here you can spend hours and hours to explore the vast library i'm just going ahead and uh, making a new project for you to show how to you can simulate your own design which you can make by using your own idea so let's go to new project and it will ask us for the name the project name so we have to give it our project name which i'm going to give my own name shigarf sugar that's nice i'm going to use new project same my documents pass click on next I'm going to leave it to default the size i want it default or you can use a4 a3 a1 whatever you like i'm going to use default it should be one in one ratio okay never mind so we are going ahead with the pcb layout and then so i don't want the pcb layout so i'm going next no firmware project next finish i just want the schematic for you to show what i want so now that we are here you can see a grid palette which is the vast thing which you will first notice and then off i want your attention to be on the top side as you can see the menus changed it changed with the tab you're on currently i'm at schematic capture program of proteus so it will give me um the options which is related to this one only and as you can see there's tons of other options on my left side what are these you can know them by hovering your cursor on them like i'm currently on selection mode then there's component mode and then there's junction dot mode these are different modes which will guide you through your project which will make your work so easy and then there's this preview pane on the top left which will show you where you are currently what you are viewing we are viewing the whole area of our palette the blue line it shows the whole palette which we are going to use and then we can zoom in and out using our mouse wheel which is on our mouse in the center so if we are if i will push my mouse wheel to front it will zoom in I'll pull my mouse wheel backward it will zoom out zoom in and out function is a good thing we cannot move the palette with our cursor by clicking on it it will just make a box so don't try it we cannot do that we can just zoom in zoom out for you to travel across your screen you have to click on the display pane it will give you a moving cursor then you can move your display anywhere you want throughout your palette and you can click on again to drop you off now zoom out i'll show you a bigger picture you see that green color it signifies that you're what you're viewing the viewing area of your monitor i'm going to move it to the center drop it off okay now there's this list here which is currently empty it says devices it means devices which you have currently in your list i don't have any so i'm going to add devices which i'm going to use so what i'm going to do i'll make a simple circuit making of a, a battery and a resistor and an led with a switch for you to show how you can simulate your circuit which will work as it would work in your real time real world just virtual so what i'm going to do i'll click on p it says pick devices it will open a menu called pick devices where you can pick your devices anything you want i will discourage you to open l which says devices libraries it shows a tons of pieces of equipment and things and libraries which is not you know really easy to understand as of now at the given point so i'm going to close it i'm just going to go ahead with pick devices now you can see that there's keyword category subcategory manufacturer now you can search your elements using two methods you can either enter the name of the element or you can search it from the category menu like i want an led so what i'm going to search for what i'm going to search for i actually don't know it's a diode so i'm going to search in the diode now there will be a subcategory of what what kind of diode i don't want a zener diode i don't want a tunnel diode i don't want switching i don't want short key i want something like you see it's very hard to search for an led using this thing so i'm just going ahead 
and I'm going to use the keyword LED and dash for my sub keyword which should be the color as you can see it's all it already gave me a tons of them but I want the red LED to be precise so I'm going to type red it gave me the exact piece of equipment what I wanted now there's this result pane where this just one red LED and to the right it's the preview pane where you can see the preview of the equipment you've currently selected in my case I've selected red LED it's a red LED there's no PCB preview because it's just a passive element okay now to add this to my list I have to just double click on it and it will be added to my list it's that simple now again if I will click on ok this menu will close which I don't want I want more peripherals like a resistor so what resistor now this app has a sensitive kind of searching mechanism which gives you the exact material you are searching for for my case I was just searching for a resistor I didn't mention what type of what amount of I just wanted a resistor it just gave me an analog primitive resistor without any values so to add that I have to look for it which is selected right here it's in blue I have selected I'm just gonna double click on it and it's selected in my list then what do I want I want a DC voltage source either I type a battery or a DC voltage source I'm going to type battery battery so if it, it's giving me battery from different libraries and there's just this uh, different description for them all are the same but it depends upon you what you choose just going to choose a device battery which is multicellular double click on it it's there now I want a switch so it give me the exact switch I want I didn't describe what kind of switch I want I don't want isolated I don't want S uh, DPDT or SPDT just want a generic switch it gave me a SPST switch which is latched which gives a logic 0 when you are connected to a digital pin if it gives you logic 1 when the circuit is complete ok never mind that it was just an Arduino stuff I'm gonna just double click it and it's included now that's all I want I'm gonna click ok and it will close nice so how to add them to my display pane it's simple you have to click on the element you want I want my battery it will show me I am I'm selected on battery the cursor will change to a pen icon and then I have to click on the pane to sell to get the battery to my pane and then it will move around with my cursor as you can see and then as soon as I'll click left click it will drop off on the pane and you can see that it's of 9 volt battery 1 this is the name this is the reference name which you can give this is the 9 volt signifies what voltage does it have plus 9 and minus 9 volt and then what I want I want my resistor to be in series with my switch and LED so I'm, so I'm going to click on the resistor and then I'll drop off my resistor right here okay then I want my switch to be in series with this so my switch and then my red LED and then I'll drop off my red LED and no remember the LED is polarized so anode side should be facing anode side if if and if in your case the LED is like this let me just correct it oh sorry if LED is like that remember it the cathode side is facing my switch which, should, which shouldn't be because anode side is going to be connected to resistor then it will go to switch and then it should be going to the anode side of the LED so what should you do you should click on them uh, click click on it click on the element or if it's multiple elements then click on it click on this tool right here the block rotate and it will ask you how much angle do you want it to be rotated to I'm gonna type 180 degree because I want it to be mirrored I want the anode side to be upward and cathode side to be downward so I'm going to uh, rotate it 180 degree click on ok and voila it's rotated now the cool part we can wire this thing without adding a wire to our list oh sorry so how should you do that remember if you have a pen icon to your cursor you have to select them you have to go to your left and click on the selection mode tool and there's tons of different mode junction dot mode and wire label mode and text script mode bosses mode subscript mode tons of different modes you have to click on 
selection mode in order to wire this thing so click on the terminal it will highlight red and then the wire should come up you can always left click to lock your wire at a point if you want your wire to rotate you see the wire is not rotating if i will not lock my wire and i'll go to my right if i'll go up the wire will go up it will go down you see the difference so to unselect my wire to unselect my to undo my wiring i have to right click and then start again i will lock it here and then i'll connect it my resistor and then i'll connect my resistor to my switch and then my switch to my led and then my led to negative ground that's sweet i think my circuit is complete it's open by the switch but it's complete overall so what do we wanted we wanted a 5 volt battery a 330 ohm resistor and a led now this has been calculated that's why i'm using a 5 volt battery if you want to use a 9 volt battery you have to recalculate the resistance and your led in particular uses 2.2 volt forward voltage and 10 milliamps of full drive current so i have done the calculations and i need a 5 volt battery with 330 ohm resistor to drive it at full drive so to edit the properties of any element any given element in your, in your circuit or in your pallet just like i did with led you just have to double click on them and it will show you the properties now part reference is a name you can give it to a name be a -R -R battery and what do we want we want 5 volts you don't have to put v you just have to put the voltage uh, numbers it will just work fine so battery 5 now you see 5 it's a bit confusing that's why we give it 5 v for it to show 5 volts now that's that's really good now we have to edit our resistor double click on it it's 10k we just want 330 it's already in ohms i don't have to give k if i'll give k it will be like 330k 330 thousand ohms so for that to not happen i'm just going to use 330 and click on ok this is my resistor one don't have to do anything with switch in the led you have you can you know see the part value the part reference name it's diode one i'm going to use led and all the things right here okay the led red led now my circuit is complete now what do i have to do i have to check for loose connections there's no loose connection it's all good then in order to simulate the circuit you have to go to the left bottom side of your screen and click on play button now play button runs the simulation the play pause button runs the simulation with just a unit animation frame that means for a single unit time this is useful for them who want to do the transient analysis or circuit analysis of the circuit and there's just this pause button if you're running your simulation and you want to pause at any given time you can click on it and the circuit will just pause which is not real but you can do it here to evaluate your circuit to debug it and then there's this stop button to stop the animation i'm going to start the animation the simulation okay to, sh to know it's started you you can see it here animating and it gives the time now moment of truth i have to see if my simulation works or not i'm going to click on the switch to close the circuit and it's not working let's see why i'm going to stop the simulation so everything looks good my battery is of 5 volts my resistor is of 330 ohms math can't be wrong i've done the maths it should it should be working so what remains is my led let's see what this led is what it is set it to there's tons of different values tons of different informations if it's a active element like this you have to see the difference between digital and analog our circuit is pure analog there's no nothing like digital in it so the model type is set to digital which is not which is not allowing our uh, Pro proteus to render it as a, a glowing led so you have to click on default or analog clicking on default means the proteus will automatically decide if it's analogous or digital in my case it's analogous so i'm just gonna click on analog if you don't know for sure you can leave it to default and it will work fine i'll show you how i'm just going to click on analog and click ok and see if it works and then i'm going to use the default 
So start the simulation and it's it eliminated. I'm going to open the circuit. It went off, on, off, on, off and on. You can click on the switch too. For it to make happen, you don't have to click the arrow. So it's working fine. Now let's see if it works with default. Let's see if uh, Proteus uh, determines it as analogous. And when I, okay, it gives me an error, partition analysis error. No model specified for LED simulation failed due to partition analysis error. Okay, so Proteus is not that smart. You have to click on the analog and click on OK for it to run. Click on play and it's working. Hola, that's nice. You have finally made and saw what a simple circuit and how to simulate it in your Proteus. Now, let's see if you want sugar. I want uh, my I want to see what voltage drop is around at uh, around this. Uh, uh, this LED so first stop the simulation now Proteus allows you to use tons of different things which you can which you should use uh, or you might be using in your real life like a CRO cathode ray oscilloscope and a voltmeter and ammeter it's all included in it you have to go to the left side left toolbar menu you can see there's a generator mode you can generate different kind of things like DC sine wave this is a wave generator basically we want something else what do we want we want a peripheral for that you have to click on this icon and it's instruments this icon signifies instruments and there's tons of different instruments which you can use by default oscilloscope has been selected what do we want we want a dc voltmeter let's search for it yeah here it is a dc voltmeter I've selected it it's selected it's in my preview pane and you can see the green a happy little pen i'm going to click on it and there is my voltmeter click on it again and it will drop off now let's wire it before wiring you have to make sure that your simulation is stopped or else it won't happen oh i'm sorry if you accidentally picked up your element just like me and you already have it you can always undo it by clicking on escape or right clicking it I'm going to use escape and it just went off. Don't want you. Okay, and it's been connected to the junction. Let's close the switch. I mean, open the switch. Okay, always remember to go back to the selection tool tool if you if you're done so that you won't um, hinder with the circuit. Now let's simulate it and see how much voltage voltage drop does it have. Okay, simulation starts and nothing drops because our switch is open we have to close it and as soon as it eliminates it gives me the voltage which is plus 2.22 volts which is nice which is what it should be my math is correct math always works as you can see our, our led was just on the digital side now this is working and this should be working as it should be and it's real good now you have successfully simulated and saw your circuit working with a voltmeter you can choose different things like a DC DC uh, voltmeter, ammeter, oscilloscope, logic analyzer, counter timer and so many different things. There's just no limits. You are always limited by your vision. So think, make some cool projects, use the ideas, stop the simulation, make the circuit and enjoy your circuitry. Thank you for watching. Shigar Musham signing off.